All right. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we have a couple hundred people in our webinar at the moment, so more are joining. So we'll um, we'll get a start. We'll get go ahead and kick this thing off and and rock and roll. My name is Frank Logan. I'm with Arc and Riot, and I'll be the host today, the moderator. Um, and I'm really excited about um, we have a really informative webinar to share with everyone today. So uh, before we do dive into things, though, I'm gonna go through some simple housekeeping items. Uh, we are recording today's webinar, and at the end of it, um, it will be distributed whether you attended or if you had to jump out early. Uh, don't worry, the whole recording will be sent to you. Um, a little disclaimer, we, we wanted to put this in here. <laughs> this webinar is meant really only to, to present ideas and perspectives. So your federal, your state, even your local governments, um, they're going to give you the official guidelines for when to return to work. So while our topic is very um, relevant to returning to work, Look for those official guidelines from your, your um, government uh, institutions. Everyone is on mute, but we do encourage you to use the chat window to submit some questions. And we'll do our best. We'll try really hard to cover as many of them as we possibly can, either live if they're relevant to the person who's speaking, um, or at the end, we'll try to circle back around. So, so don't be shy in the, in the, uh, in the chat window. Um, we did want to ask a couple of questions. We're going to pull our audience real quick, and this is going to help our three guest speakers, our panelists, uh, direct their narratives. So, um, Delphine, why don't we why don't we pop up the first the first poll question? We're going to ask the audience, and you'll see it on the little panel that's on your screen there. Uh, there should be a poll question that says, you know. Um, do you do you have a return to work plan in place? So there's four options there. Yes, um, we're working on it internally. Yes, we're working on it with an outside consultant. No, we haven't started a plan yet. Uh, or if you're just unsure. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer here. So uh, we'll leave that open for about 30 seconds just to get a feel for for who we're talking to, what, what the mood is or what, what everybody's plans are uh, currently. So we're just asking if everybody has a plan, and if you do, um, you know, are you working with someone internally, a, you know, a task force that you've created, or, or an outside consultant? So we got about 50% of our audience has voted so far. I'm not going to share the results yet. They're, I don't even know if they're presented. If everybody can see the results, but uh, once you vote, I think you can. I don't want to give it away quite yet. 61% voted. Maybe if we hit a 70%, I'll, we'll shut this one down. Okay, it looks like folks have stopped uh, contributing. All right, so let's, let's share the results on that one. So 72% of you said that yes, we're working on it currently internally. Only 2% are working with an outside consultant. 11% uh, of you have not yet started a plan and 14% are unsure. So that's great. So 70 plus percent are, are well on their way. They're starting to think about that return to the, the workplace. That's fantastic. Uh, Delphine, let's put our second question up there, our second poll. So when you do return to work, which best describes your strategy? Are you coming back as a full staff, partial staff? Are you staggering your shifts? Uh, or are you unsure? So that's our second question. We're just curious how how people are thinking about coming on back into the office or the workspace. So that poll should be up live in front of you all now. Oh, here come the votes. This will really help our panelists when they're when they're talking to us for the next half hour or so. Uh, are we doing a full staff return? Are we doing partial? Um, you know, are people staggering, staying at home for maybe a one day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday type of thing, or a Tuesday, Thursday? All right, so we're almost at sixty percent again. That's fantastic. Okay, so that's really good. That that's really going to help us out here. Um, you know, forty percent of you have said that you're doing a partial staff. Only thirteen percent are thinking a full staff right now. About about a quarter of you, 25% of you are just not sure yet, right? And that's fair. 33% um, are doing a staggered shift. So that's 
that's really helpful. Thanks for, for answering that one. Um, okay, we got one more question. This is really an interesting one. Um, Delphine, let's put that last question up there. Which departments, so this is assuming you're gonna put a little task force together, which departments should be included in a return to work task force? And you can select multiple um, departments there. The first one is human resources and our your administration team. Uh, the second one is your marketing team. Third one is you know your facilities team, building facilities. Uh, fourth option is your C-suite, you know, your executives. And then your final one is your IT department, right? So, and you, again, you can mul you can check multiple boxes there. Um, doesn't have to be just one or or two. Could be all of them, right? If you think that that's necessary for the task force, or. Um, all right. So, oh wow, here come the votes. All right, we're up to forty percent now. Wow, this is a great audience. You're super interactive. I'm loving this. This is really fantastic. And for our, our panelists, our speakers, they're probably loving this. This is giving them great perspective. So thank you so much. All right, we're over 50%, closing in on 60%. Uh, okay, I think that's good enough. Thanks everyone for, for voting, really appreciate that. Uh, let's just get the results out there. So 87% said their HR department or admin team needs to be involved. 50% uh, said their marketing teams. 85% said their facilities teams need to be part of that, that task force. It's interesting, only 61% said the C-suite, the executives. <laughs> I would have thought that'd be 100%, but <laughs> um, your task force are each unique, right? And then 60% also said your IT department. So, wow, great. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for, for contributing there. Um, let's, let's actually talk about this. Uh, what are we doing today? You know. So I, before we even start, I want to just get, have a quick note and a, a pause and say, hey, our thoughts, and, you know, even our prayers are with those who are currently affected um, or infected and or infected by this coronavirus pandemic, right? Um, and I really want to give a su super sincere thank you to the three panelists. You know, they're donating their time and time is really tough to come by right now. We're all pulled in so many directions. So thanks for taking the time to share this perspective. And I really think that this is one of the best things we can do right now. Uh, it's going to help our industries and our communities, that whole act of, you know, sharing best practices. So thanks for coming in today and, and talking to us and sharing that. Um, I think our topic is super timely and super relevant, especially as you know, all these world economies are preparing to reopen and employees are starting to think about how they're going to come back into the workforce. And what's really unique and what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks, maybe the next couple of months, is we have the ability to influence people's behavior, right? Uh, and in doing so, we have the ability to, to help protect them if we do it right in their, in their spaces that they're coming back into. We want to help build this confidence, this comfort, this security environment, right? And you can look, you can send 100 emails to people. But the, one of the most impactful ways of influencing people's behavior is through visual aids. Right? And that's what we're going to talk about today with our panelists. Um, we want to know things like, hey, how is your staff going to come back? And how are they feeling about coming back? And do they want to come back to the office space, right? And in that physical environment that we're all coming into, how are you taking you know, visual graphics? Um, to play any kind of a role in that in that return to work. So these are the types of questions we're gonna ask. All right, so let's talk about who we have with us today. Um, Ashley, Ashley Kohler is a uh, the Director of Graphic Design at PPK Architects. They're down in the Houston market in Texas. And she focuses exclusively on, on environmental graphic design at PBK's uh, K through 12 higher education and their corporate clients. That's a great uh, breadth of, of clientele that she's servicing. Uh, Brad, uh, Brad Williams, who is AIA, um, he's the president and CEO of RDC, which is an international architectural firm with about 175 employees spread over five offices. Uh, he has experience with the urban infill revitalization projects, you know, some high density retail developments, and numerous successful facade revitalization projects, both in the public and the private entities, um, as well as some institutional projects. And so welcome, Brad. And Christy Kane, um, IIDA, 
is the vice president and principal over at ASD Sky. And she has experience in you know, the workplace, um, higher education, healthcare, hospitality, and the science and technology sectors. So what I'm really excited about today is we have three individuals who cover a whole broad array of industries, right? Um, our format today is super casual. It's a fireside chat. So we're just gonna have a conversation and talk things through. Um, we'll show some simple images in the background while they're chatting and they're, they're sharing their perspectives. So none of them are per pertinent to, you know, directly related to the speaker, but just to kind of give us something to look at. But we really want to just open it up for a few minutes and talk to the talk to the panelists and have them share their thoughts. Ashley, could we could we start with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, hi, everybody. As Frank said, my name is Ashley Kohler, and I'm the director of the Environmental Graphic Design Department here at PBK Architects in Houston. Um, our work revolves mainly around large-scale murals in the K-12 arena, but we do also do work in higher education and corporate architecture. Um, I was excited and interested to take part in the discussion today uh, as we all move closer to the start of the school year, which is relevant for me, but we're also trying to anticipate what our clients might need from us, um, both in the education environment and the work environment. And as schools are both, um, we're interested in, in putting a foot out there to help our clients make a seamless return and a safe and comfortable return. Uh, I think it's a worthwhile discussion to have as all businesses are starting to open back up and people are venturing outside and venturing into old spaces again for the first time. I'm intrigued by the idea of trying to change old habits in myself and help others do the same. Uh, we're gonna have to learn how to re-interact in these old spaces. Um, and I'm also wondering how I can help to implement new practice and habits as we all return uh, to work. I've also started noticing the graphic design that other companies have started to put out. Um, it's been minimal so far, but I'm curious to see and discuss what everyone's perspectives and opinions are on what is out there now and how it could be improved. Uh, I think it'll be helpful to everyone who will be designing and producing this type of design in the months to come, uh, including myself. It's new territory for everyone, so I'm really excited to be here and discuss and learn with everyone involved. So thanks for having me. Yeah, fabulous. So you've got the education background, and that is <laughs> near and dear to my heart personally, but I'm sure many mm -hmm. of the folks that are tuned in today have kids or grandchildren or or at least their neighbors are, are all struggling with that. So that's gonna be really cool to dive into that. Um, hey, Brad, why don't we flip it over to you? Yeah, thanks, Frank. Appreciate the invitation to be here today and talk about this subject. Obviously, it's something that's on all of our minds. Um, I think Ashley put it really well when she said that, you know, we're all really interested in how we revisit these spaces that we've designed and helping our clients, you know, sort of re-enter a world that we've all kind of been away from for a little while. So we do a lot of uh, retail, both for developers um, and for sort of uh, malls and big REITs. And so, and, and we also do a lot of workplace um, as well. So, you know, our clients are coming to us asking us, you know, how do we reintroduce people back into a retail environment in a safe way? And how do I get people back into an office in a safe way? Um, and certainly, you know, graphics are a huge part of that. Um, and it's something that we're exploring right now ourselves. You know, we're working on our own sort of return to work plan and using ourselves um, as guinea pigs. And certainly signs are a huge part of that. Um, but also, you know, I think starting with the question, or at least we're starting with the question of, you know, how do we, how do we, why, why do we return? Our utilization is up so much right now. I, got, I can't even tell you. So, you know, is our office more of a distraction to our employees than, than we thought? Are we, are we better working from home? I don't know. We're sort of starting with those really basic fundamental questions on ourselves right now. So it's interesting to have this dialogue right now and see what every, what's on everybody else's mind. So thank you for the invitation to come and talk today. Yeah, you bet, Brad. Wow, that's a huge question. <laughs> We all just, uh, why do we even come, have to come back to the office, right? I mean, that's a really relevant question, especially if your utilization is up. And in an architecture firm, it, you guys watch that very closely. So um, that, wow, interesting, right? Great question to pose. Um, hey, Christy, let's talk with you for a second. What, what's your perspective? 
Yes, um, I'm Christy Kane, and again, thank you very much for inviting me to this panelist. Um, this is a great topic, and it's one um, we have, I would say, in the last two weeks. Um, a lot of our clients, we have a lot of landlord real estate clients um, and, you know, more workplace-focused um, areas that we're focusing on, and they've been asking that question, too. What can we do different? You guys are designing this space for us right now. So how can we think of this differently? How can we make that a better environment for people? But what we're trying to tell people is, um, you know, just just make sure that you are confident and you're, you're empathetic with your employees when they come back because everybody's situation is so very different on how they're coming to work. It may be the way that they commute. So if they come in on a train every day, that commute may not be able to work anymore. So we're trying to figure out other opportunities for that to be engaged. And so we're trying to reduce the stress. And by doing that, the graphics really have a huge impact on that. So where are those landmark places within a facility? And how can we use technology that are you know, sensor-based so that you're not having to put your hands on hardware and doors are opening automatically? And so how are we going to communicate that to the workplace ahead of time? So communication is key in reinforcing your culture and um, driving people in, back into the space. And we've asked that same question, why are we coming back? Because, again, our, our staff, our utilization is up as well. And, um, and so we're really finding, we put a survey out to everybody, and what people are missing is that collaborative opportunity. So. When we're going back, we're trying to figure out a plan where those collaborations can happen. So you can think a team to like before COVID sat together. So if you go in a staggered approach, that team may not be working together again. So we're trying to figure out a way um, to then bring in the workers. Maybe it's 50%. Um, we may start with 20 and people only come in on Tuesday, Thursdays for about four hours um, and try and not have that kind of break room aspect of heating up food and lunch. So there's um, some safety measures with that as well. So with graphics, that's really going to be the way that we can tell that story and make people feel very comfortable in the environment again. Wow, that's really interesting too. Um, the collaboration piece is really probably the trickiest part, right? Gosh, Zoom and Ring Central and go to webinars and all these on online tools are helping foster that. But that in person collaboration um, is still a vital part of our our mix of how we work together and how we produce things, right? So if your utilization is great, but you're missing the collaboration piece, let's talk about that. You're going to have to have people come into the office. So when they do, how are you gonna direct them? What's the, and maybe we'll go reverse order here. Ash, or I'm sorry, Christy, what, what's, what is some of the stuff that your, your team is talking about putting up or helping coach them or, or influence how they're there to expect to work within the office space? Right, we, um, we're developing kind of like a graphic scenario. We're trying to have fun with it. Um, so we're trying to make like fun messages for everybody, but um, you know, where your training space where you used to be able to fit, you know, like 50 people, it's now like a 10 person conference room. So the signage aspect of that is really important so that people are, you know, kind of notified ahead of time, like only eight people or two people can be in this room. And we're finding too that we're before, a place may have worked really well within the work environment, but moving to the future, there might be another place that people are starting to congregate and collaborate. Um, and we're thinking it's probably going to be in front of technology um, as long as we can keep that six foot distance in mind. Yeah, Christy, Frank, I'm next, so I'm going to just go. Christy, we're, we're definitely you. doing the same thing. You know, we're thinking about signage in terms of you know, sort of user experience of staff, but and then clients as well. And, you know, what greets a client when they come to our office now? And what's the messaging that we're providing? Because we want our clients to feel, you know, that we're in a safe environment as well. Um, so, and then we're trying to think about, well, you know, our, our employees, 
you know, what is it that's going to speak to them? And, and similar to you, we're trying to think about using some more sort of fun graphics, something that's memorable that's not too, I don't know, it doesn't look like a nuclear hazard zone, right? And we want to have a little bit of fun with it as well. We don't know how long these signs are going to be up. We're thinking about, well, do we brand these signs? Because, geez, are, are they going to be up for a month? Are they going to be up for two months? What are we, what are we looking at here? So we're confronting those same questions as well. So Brad, non-nuclear. Is my main takeaway there. Non uh, non-nuclear <laughs> signage is preferred. And, and and by the way, bigger state like sort of bigger statements, instead of a bunch of small signs, we're sort of thinking, well, you know, they don't really grab your attention, so are there, you know, I don't want to call them super graphics, but you know, larger, less frequent signs that capture your attention, um, that are a little bit more graphic based and Right, we don't have a lot of little signs. I was in a um, very popular uh, store over the weekend, um, not called Costco, because I don't want to give away any names here today. But they've got all these signs in this place, and there's just nobody paying attention because they're very small. There's a lot of them, but they're really tiny, and they just sort of blend into the environment after a while, and I think people just ignore them. So we want to make sure people sort of feel better and are directed better by larger, more fun graphics. Yeah, so that's a perfect segue to, to Ashley, because she's the graphics guru on the line here, right? <laughs> she's the graphic designer. What does that mean? Do we, we go more subtle, more branded? Do we go nuclear, you know, yellow, black? Is it in your face and huge, small, big, large, whatever? Give us some perspective. What really, what's the right design aspects that would help uh, the scenario? Well, I definitely agree with Brad. I don't think, I think we need to work hard not to overwhelm. I think less is more. Um, we have some signage in our building, not in our office, but in our building that is tons of tiny pictures, tons of tiny, like just tiny font. And you have to get, you know, a foot away from it to read it. And that's not helping anyone with learning or with social distancing. Um, so I think bigger is better, less is more. And I think you also have to keep your audience in mind. Like in our office, we don't have a lot of clients come in, so it'll just be um, what we need to tell our employees or what we need to remind our employees of. Um, in a school, it would be, um, you know, you're going to be managing those gathering areas like libraries, gyms, uh, playgrounds, and it, you know, obviously a sign for elementary school kids is going to be very different from a sign for a high school student. Sure. Um, so I think in, in all of those things, whether you choose to go branding or not, I would never, ever advise um, to use a lot of red. We don't, I don't think we want these signs to be scary. We want them to be informative and approachable. Um, so I don't think you need a lot of like big red signs that are like that. But I think you can take into a company's branding into account. Um, we've done some COVID signs, nothing like um, social distancing wise, but just some informational signs that, you know, took into the school, like branding and, and um, you know, it's for elementary school kids. So it's very cute and cartoony, but it was supposed to be uplifting. So I think taking into account who is going to be seeing these signs, whether it's employees, students, um, your average consumer, and thinking about, well, the average person is not going to read a ton of small text. Um, you know, a kindergartner will need more icons rather than words. Etc. I just think it's important to keep who the audience is in mind when you're designing all of this. Yeah, I want to dive into that a little bit further, Ashley. Um, you said mm -hmm. some things that I'm I'm exponentially being educated here. Uh, mm -hmm. Less red. Red is scary. You know, yellow is probably nuclear, right? But mm -hmm. <laughs> what are some of the other? I don't say catchphrases, but things to consider with color. You said, you know, that for kids, you want it to be happy and, 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 you know, effective if it's engaging, but you don't want it to be scary for them. Are there any other tips on that from, from a color perspective? Um, I think so, yeah. And, and dealing with smaller children, you always want to use brighter colors, um, no, none of your earth tones. With adults, um, I would say to skew more mature, you know, um, grays, blues or whatever the company logo is, really, um, if you're looking to incorporate their branding. 
Um, and you can use red, like these signs on the screen have red in small amounts. And I think that's fine, especially if you have like that number four, if you want to call out that only four people can come in there, I think that's fine to highlight. I just wouldn't use a predominantly red sign because I think it, you know, it means it kind of gives a feeling of nervousness or um, I'm doing something wrong. So we want these signs, I think, to be inviting and you want people to be able to take away the information quickly um, in passing. So you don't want to require anyone to stop for too long to get the information out of your sign. Right, right. Good, good stuff. I love that. That's, um, that's really helpful. Uh, Brad or Christy, I'm, I'm curious, how, how long should this, you, one of you said short-term, long-term type signage. We're, we're trying to, we're welcoming people back and we have to set expectations, right? We're trying to create the new norm. This, when you walk into our space, this is how you should act. And until people do on their own subliminally, and we train them, we're gonna have to be a little bit in their face with some some kind of a, a sharper color. But eventually the signage is gonna be replaced. It's probably gonna be replaced with um, you know, better carpet patterns or better lighting that directs, I don't know, you guys are the design experts, but how long do you think we need to put up this this signage? Is this a one month, 10 month, five year thing? What, what's some ideas from your end? I Hang on, Frank. I'm consulting my crystal ball right now. Hold on one second. I don't know. How anybody know. <laughs> That's a great question. All we're asking ourselves, you know, how long do these signs stay up? You know, we're trying, we're personally trying to have the maximum effect for obviously the lowest initial cost and the lowest ongoing maintenance cost. Um, so we want to have an effect and we have to be prepared to have these up for, I think right now we're saying six to eight months is sort of our internal uh, clock. Um, Christy, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's um, once, it's just like anything, once people are trained on how that behavior needs to be, it starts to become the norm. And, you know, a graphic, you see it for the first time and over time, you are used to it being there and you kind of ignore it and you're used to maintaining the way that you do things every day. It's, it's kind of like a change management portion. So I feel like the change management and how you communicate to your teams is going to be very heavy in the beginning and it can dial back as, as time goes on. There, there was really one, one piece um, that, that we're, we're we're trying to like remind our clients about too is um, a lot of the furniture and um, products that are out there right now, um, a lot of people are thinking they can use Clorox and clean with them, but in actuality, it's good to do a little research um, to make sure that that um, product doesn't need a, a special type of cleaner. Um, so there are some cleaners out there that um, can be utilized that, you know, will be better. And then we're also introducing more plants in the workspace because that, in essence, will cycle oxygen and um, hopefully help with some of the, the viruses that are out there. And then thinking about how we can extend our outdoor workspaces. So are there areas outdoors that maybe are parking lots right now that we could utilize is more collaborative areas. So um, people are able to go outside and collaborate more easily in an, in an outdoor environment. Yeah, you know, in, in the office space, um, oftentimes we're jammed on top of each other, right? So staggered shifts, more space between cubicles, you know, more outdoor space is gonna definitely become part of the, the new design um, norms, I'm sure, as we go forward and we're thinking about this. I'm curious in, in the in the short term, we have the spaces we have today, we're kind of stuck with those and assuming people do come back, what is what is the panel's thoughts on this kind of one way traffic flow? Um, we see this popping up all over the place, sometimes in grocery stores. Um, I'm sure malls will have something like that. And what about in the office space? Is, is that going to be effective? Is it necessary? Um, what's, what's your thoughts? Um, I was actually thinking about that. Um, earlier today because I saw a one-way sign and this is my opinion uh, not based on science <laughs> but I think if you're talking about corridors or hallways where people are going to just be passing I don't know that that's 
strictly necessary, maybe more so in retail or um, grocery stores where people will be lingering, um, that it might be more essential and effective. But I think in an office environment, if you're just going to be passing and the corridors are mainly just used from getting from point A to point B, then it's probably not necessary. Um, that's my opinion. So, interesting. So, Ashley, in our office, we have a pretty open, so in our headquarters in Long Beach, we have about 120 people there. It's a pretty open studio environment. And so we have actually definitely thought about, you know, making our aisles directional um, because mm -hmm. some of them are a little tighter than others. And I think we just want to, I guess, err, be overcautious. I don't want to use the term abundance of caution because I've heard that way too much lately. So we want to be extra cautious um, and just uh, make those sort of one-way traffic patterns. So we definitely have some signage that we're looking at to, uh, to accomplish that. Yeah, that's um, in, in our workplace, we have benching. So, um, and what we're going to do is rows will come in um, because if the row behind you were to come in, then you wouldn't be able to capture the walking six foot distance. So we are going to be putting like a tape in the line so that you have space to walk um, in and out of your workspace. Yeah, that's that's important too. I'm, I'm sure some offices are really open and allow for, you know, you can just walk freely. But other ones, I'm um, looking at, you know, New York City and and even downtown LA. These might be, you know, Chicago. There's, square footage has always been a premium, right? So getting people to to max it out is has been the the goal. So it's really interesting how they're going to have to deal with it. Um, but let's talk about the return to 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 work task force. Um, and from a graphics perspective and a, you know, how that's going to fit into it, what are some of the questions that, you know, let's rattle off five or six or seven questions that we can arm the attendees with that are important questions the task force should be asking to be prepared when they're, they're building their plan. Well, uh, Frank, we didn't get a chance to, to uh, vote. I was hoping to vote on the, uh, <laughs> we out the poll. We didn't get a chance to vote. We were sort of blocked. But I, I would say that um, what we are doing is involving each one of those departments. I think obviously HR, just from a statutory standpoint, making sure that we're not asking our employees to do anything they feel uncomfortable with, or you know puts them in jeopardy, or is following some sort of practice that is not a best practice or a best guideline. Um, we're involving marketing so that we can. You know, just make sure we're messaging correctly, and that's their job. Um, definitely involving IT uh, because you know, they're sort of integral to figuring out how we get people working offsite and onsite, and then together at the same time when we need to. And then you know, you sort of mentioned the C-suite, um, and that group definitely has to be involved at least in in our operation because you know we have to have buy-in at the highest levels of leadership so that we're reinforcing you know, our messaging and best practices at every level of the organization. So I, I would say we have a little input from each one of those groups. Um, and then as well as our staff, which which we're sort of asking them via surveys, you know, what their level of comfort is in coming back to the office. Because we have some people who are just chomping at the bit that we've had to sort of, you know, say, don't come into the office. We don't want you there. I mean, go if you have to print something or do whatever. Um, but we have people who definitely are more productive working from the office. Then we have others that, you know, probably never want to come back, I would think, and are just fine working from home and it eases their burden on their, you know, on childcare and things like that. So it's working out perfect uh, for them. Um, so sorry, I'll, I'll stop talking, but that's where we're at with the, with who to involve in the return to work strategy. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, and I, I that. think it's, I think a good good question to ask um, your staff is, um, you know, what what are what's concerning them about returning to the workplace, so that when you figure out what their concerns are, you can at least capture the top, you know, three or four, um, and then make sure you communicate um, that information again. It's that whole change management. Make sure you communicate over and over. Um, that you're listening to them and you're hearing what their concerns are and making sure that you're accommodating those. Sure. 
Yeah, that's that's really interesting too. Uh, I love that question. What is concerning you? Get it out on the table, and then you can address it and talk about it, right? Um, yeah, is anybody we, we doing... found that we found the highest was the commute, which is interesting, um, and then the cleaning of common areas. So, so yes, and is that um, cleaning from a professional cleaning crew, or just common courtesy cleaning? Everybody helps clean up there around you, or we're, well, there's, a, there's both, a janitorial, though. yeah, there's a janitorial aspect, and, and you know that they're going to only take care of so much, so you really are going to have to rely on the staff. Um, we've heard different stories of, you know, having um, furniture vendors are now creating these, like, you know, you can get wipes that are on your workstation that are built into it, and you can wipe your desk down when you're done, when you start in, in the day. Um, and then we've also heard it graphically, like making some placemats that are there um, that that you can then, you know, fold up and throw away um, after the fact. Yeah, that's really good stuff, Christy. Yeah. And, then, and then the other thing we're talking about providing is, or at least is in the conversation, is personal protective equipment for people. So when they're up and about, or they have to go to a job site, or they are meeting with clients, we're providing surgical masks and gloves and things like that for those who who are need to be a little bit more active than others. That's just another component of all this that makes it so. Yeah, and I mean, you know, if your buildings have stairs, if your buildings have stairs, like, can you talk to your landlords to see if they can prop doors open so that you can walk the stairs instead of using elevators um, just kind of little things and then there, there's a, a health aspect to that so you get so many steps by walking up so many stairs um, you know you can have fun with it as an organization right there's a couple questions coming in from the chat window and we're already at about 40 minutes so I want to respect everybody's time and we'll just maybe rip through a couple of these if you guys are, are able to um, hang out with us for a few more minutes um, mm -hmm. You know, what are your thoughts on positive approach to messaging versus negative? Um, a list of yes, do, or don't do's. How do, how, how do you want to phrase things on your, your signage? Um, in my opinion, I think with the media and, you know, the scientific stuff that's coming out about this disease, we don't really need a lot more of, we don't need to scare people. I think people are already concerned. So I think the signage just needs to be informative and approachable. Um, again, I, I don't think that using a lot of like, don't, absolutely not, like no hard verbiage. I think just putting the message out there in a clear, concise way is, is enough. Um, I think I'm viewing it as more of a, I think most people know what they need to do, um, but they may need extra direction in new environments um so to just provide that or reminders you know like don't go for in an elevator um you know here's where you should stand like just nice reminders i don't think we need to really hammer it in we don't need any more uh, freaking out than than people are already freaking out i, I completely <laughs> right. agree actually just <laughs> nice straightforward factual reminders of, of best practices is the way to go. Right. Yeah, nothing, I, nuclear. I would, nothing nuclear. And I'm sure each organization has their own personality tone that they use graphically. And so um, we're encouraging our clients to kind of stick with that, those personalities that they've already developed within their brand to then, you know, communicate that as well. So it's a great opportunity to have fun with it and um, create it. Like, it's a positive thing. It should be fun. We're finally getting back together, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. This is really, these questions that are coming in are fantastic. Um, maybe we'll just hit a couple more and then uh, we'll f maybe find another way to get some more of these answered. We could go on for a while on these, but these are great questions. You know, someone asked how many graphics should an office have? Is it, has it been decided that, you know, X number of square feet equals X number of signs or you know, is, is that relevant at all? I, and one of you said, I love it. I think Ashley said it. Less is more, bigger is better. I think that's that's a great rule of thumb. You want to elaborate on that at all, Ashley? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I don't know of any 
like mathematical equations that have been done about how many signs an office should have. But I, again, I don't think you need a ton. I think um, you need to focus on your gathering spaces or where people may, may uh, instinctually want to group together. Um, areas where you're going to have face-to-face -face interactions, like with your receptionist or in conference rooms, things like that. I don't think you need to have a sign every six feet. They get it, especially if it's big text, they'll remember. Um, and I think if there's too much, then they won't see uh, they won't see the individual message. They'll just see a ton of signs and they're gonna not wanna deal with it. So I would say focus on your important areas. And I think it will be a learning experience as we all go. We'll, we'll start with certain signs. And then as we go, we may learn, well, we do need a sign here. We didn't realize people stood in this corner so much, you know, things like that. Yeah, I want to put something up on the. Sorry, I, I'm sorry, Frank. I don't think there's any square footage requirement. The way the way we did it is just from a complete user experience standpoint. I am a client, so we physically walked the space. I'm a client. I'm I've come to the office. What do I do? Is there a sign that says something to me? Uh, to, am I directed where to go? Where do I go? Okay, now I'm there. All right, now I'm talking to a person, but boy, I'm really too close to this person. So I'm going to need something here that says, you know, stay a little bit back. And and we we sort of did that for each user of our space. You know, I'm a staff member and I'm coming into the office. Which door do I come through? And and how do I get to my desk? Do I just wander around and talk to to to, to Sally and, and and Frank on my way, or do I need to go right to my desk? So definitely, I I don't think there's a square foot requirement. Bigger is better, for sure. Gosh, that is great advice, Brad. I love that. You know, get your get your clipboard out, you know, walk the space, put your PPE on, have your face masks, walk it with somebody else. And if you just feel too close, you probably need some kind of a warning that says, hey, we're just too close here, right? Or look around you, just explore the space as the different users. That is fantastic advice. Walk through once with your client hat on. Walk through once with your employee hat on and any other users that may come in and out of there, right? Great idea. That, that's really sound advice. Um, thanks for, for throwing that out there. Sure. Um, here's, a, here's a question. Um, once we install the graphics in our office, you know, should we rotate them? And if so, how often? Um, that's asking, I, guess. I, I know I mean, for us, we're, we have like a, a different scenarios that we're, that we're running through. So we have this, scenario that's immediate. Um, and then I would look at it from the, you know, 12 to 24 months, and then maybe even a beyond time frame. Um, and, and you'll start to know the people and the culture within the organization, and you'll be able to figure out if people are tired of seeing something or not. Um, you'll, a lot of people start joking about one certain message. And so it'd be kind of fun. Okay, maybe we'll change that up today and just surprise everybody, <laughs> you know? Yeah, th um, this is great. I think what we want to do at this point, we're right at 45 minutes. Uh, I just, I'm getting so much, I'm scribbling copious notes here. I'm sure a lot of the, the folks are as well. We've got more questions here, but I think we should probably give it a wrap. Get everybody back into their working day. There are some questions on here. Maybe what we could do, um, if if Ashley and, and Christy and Brad are okay with it, maybe we rotate or we circulate a couple more extra questions over to the three of you. We get a couple opinions and we can publish something afterwards with some general feedback if you're if you'd be comfortable with with that extra effort um, yeah absolutely so this, okay sure yeah this is Christy we're more than happy to help fabulous I have a question for you all um, are you seeing surveys coming in from your customers wanting you to go walk your walk the sites is that something that your firms do is that something you're engaging in how, how can you know, is this something that your community is starting to do? What, what's what's your game plan as a yes. firm? How are you approaching this? We we are actually we've um, been engaged by several landlords um, in the Atlanta area to come up with what is that office going to be, and um, one of them we've even developed a spec suite for them, um, and we're going to be doing like a 3D video so that they can see and feel virtually what that environment may be so that um, their tenants will feel more comfortable. And then also we're coming up with signage for them as well. So the graphic aspect. Oh, I love it. it. Yeah. 
So you're actually pre presenting a, a come back to work, here's the expectations, here's the environment before you walk in, so you feel right at home when you get there, is what you're saying. That's correct. Yeah. That's yeah, that's, that's similar to what we're doing um, as well, Frank. I mean, we have a lot of uh, office and retail users who are coming to us and asking us to help them think through these issues. And so, you know, getting that planning done, that space planning and envisioning what the space is going to look like and planning signage is, is, I guess it's a new, I guess it's a new line of work, right? I guess sure. there's a silver lining in every, every cloud. And, and most of them have their day jobs that they have to keep up with and they don't <laughs> have time to do this and we're more than right. happy to help them through it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, actually, you have a graphic designer, you're probably swamped, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm in a unique position because, you know, right now in Texas, uh, the schools are all closed. So the administrators and teachers are more than happy for us to come out to the building and walk with them and, and do signage packages for them, which is pretty much uh, standard for what we've been doing for them before. It's just with a different um, view on it. So actually, right now with schools, it's a lot easier um because we're able to get in when we wouldn't normally be able to usually we can only go in when the kids aren't there or you know have um graphics installers go in when the kids aren't there but now it's we have uh, much easier access so it's a different situation right clean slate no little munchkins running around right <laughs> right <That's> exactly <laughs> Um, all right. Well, listen. This is this has been fantastic. Um, I I need to plug us real quick, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna dismiss everybody. So bear with me for a moment here, folks. Uh, the chat window has been blowing up with can Arc help us? So yeah, of course we can, right? Um, so many of the images that you saw in today's presentation, just flipping through in the background there, were from a catalog that we've put out with all kinds of signs. Um, based off some of your feedback, actually, we might have to remove some of that red. And Brad, no <laughs> no more nuclear colors, right? Or less of them. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, the CDC signs and all kinds of different wayfinding signs and tight space signs, et cetera. So we have a catalog. We'll distribute it to everybody who joined today. Um, so you can peruse it and, and we can customize them as well. Heck, we might be tapping Ashley, Brad, and Christy on the shoulder to help us with some of the graphic design, right? Uh, if you <laughs> want to say something different with a different color, it's just a CMYK, right? So we can print anything. And then, of course, we are, we're in many of the markets in the U.S. and Canada and around the world. So if you need us, there's some simple contact information on the right-hand side there. Uh, we would love to start a dialogue as well. And I, I've put the email address of our three panelists at the bottom here. They're welcoming uh, inquiries from anyone who may need some help. Um, you know, pat them on the shoulder. They're, they're Clearly, they know what they're talking about, and they're thinking about this the right way. And again, there's no right answer here, but you know, the more that you engage with folks like these three individuals, the better off you're going to be. So I th really sincerely thank our three panelists. I really can't thank you enough. Um, this was fun, and I've, I've enjoyed the conversation. I got some great uh, one-liners and ideas out of it. I hope our audience has as well. Um, anything else you'd like to add as a closing comment or thought? I think um, um, you know, we'll, I, we'll get past we'll get past this, and we'll all come together globally because of it. And uh, it's really changing design so we're we're excited about it yeah frank Great. I, I think I'd it's going to be i'd like to have another one of these in 12 months and say you know what did what you did what you plan work did it work or how did right. science work out and then we'll all come back later and say boy that was interesting <laughs> yeah well said brad we'll do it let's do it book it <laughs> And no, I agree. I think I think it'll be interesting um, kind of starting out on this. We're all on the same foot and seeing how we progress and, and what we learn along the way. Yeah. Kudos. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in touch with the three of you and we we may just book that one year out. For all the attendees, come on back. We'll talk it through again. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, soon. thank you again. Yeah, thanks again to everybody for joining. And um, I hope everybody has a great day and stay stay healthy, stay strong, and have a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. You bet. Thank you as well. Cheers. Bye-bye.